What's going on, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to today's show, where I welcome our first former fighter pilot, Frank Wiegers. He is a fighter pilot veteran of the Vietnam War, and as he says, a divorce veteran of the relationship wars. And when he decided he didn't want any more wars, he left the military and began a study of love, sex, and relationship, has been coaching Men, women, and couples for 30 years, and with his wife, Judith Claire, they have written two books, so that's why they do that, Men, Women, and Their Hormones, and their newest book, The Magical Sex Book, Create and Sustain Amazing Sex in Four Simple Steps. And today, Frank and I talk about sex and those four simple steps to better sex. We talk about a lot of new things that we haven't really addressed in past episodes. One of them that I really like is pre-play. That's what's before foreplay and after play, after a sexual act has occurred and the importance of both of those and how they can bring you a more connected relationship with your partner and a better sex life. So stay tuned for that information. As always, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Enjoy today's show. Hey, Frank, thanks so much for joining me on the show today. Hey, so glad to be with you. I, uh, I'm really excited about this. I, and I want to say, just before we get started, how much I admire what you and Sarah are doing. I mean, you guys are like a beacon of help to people in relationship because, you know, relationships are the, one of the most challenging things we have to do in our lifetime here, but they're also one of the most rewarding things. So I just want to acknowledge you guys for doing the great work you're doing. Oh, thank you, Frank. And, you know, we're just happy to be able to have people like yourself on to have interesting conversations and hopefully help our listeners out there. So we appreciate you as well. And I'm really excited to talk to you today about relationships, but I think you have a, well, in fact, I know you have a very unique background, probably the only fighter pilot that we've had on to speak about relationships. So I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about your history flying and why you decided to then study and help people with relationships. Well, thank you. You know, I, I went to, uh, I was raised in a very religious a repressive community. And I went to uh, parochial schools and um, religious prep school, religious university. But the about the religious university was they had mandatory Air Force ROTC. And uh, I had to take part in that program. But then they asked if anybody wanted to go for a ride in an Air Force airplane. And immediately I said, yes, I'll go. And they took me up in a World War II trainer and put me in the back seat. We got up to altitude and they said, you want to fly it? I went, yeah, sure. And so he taught me how to do some things. And I went, wow, forget business administration. I want to be a pilot. So my degree in business administration and uh, went off to the Air Force and went through pilot school did the distinguished graduate from pilot school. And they said, I said, I want to be a fighter pilot. And they said, well, sorry, uh, this is the middle of the Cold War and we're taking the top of the class and putting them in bombers. And, oh, gosh. So I struggled in bombers for about three years. And then the Air Force said, if you want to get, uh, oh, oh, and, and an important part in, in that university, I met my college sweet. And we got married after I graduated. And one of the big deals about her was not only was she beautiful, I was in love with her, but her dad was in the Air Force. So I thought she knows the whole program. What could be better? Well, anyhow, we got off and, and um, finally the Air Force said, well, we'll send you back to school to get an engineering degree. I thought that's my ticket out of bombers. So I got the engineering degree and then I volunteered to fly fighters in Vietnam. And this was back in the early 60s, and I still thought that doing that was serving my country. And um, because I remember all the stories I had read about fighter pilots in World War II and the Knights of the Sky and all that, yada, yada. So anyhow, I went to Vietnam. It didn't take me very long to figure out what a stupid war that was. And uh, we were just burning up money and lives, and it was 
And as one uh, retired general said, you know, we fought on the wrong side. And so I came back from Vietnam and, and I just, I stayed in the Air Force and, I, and they made me an instructor pilot. And I loved teaching guys how to fly fighters. It was so much fun and so exciting to take those airplanes. But, but then I just, you know, I just didn't like what was happening in the military. And I got kind of screwed up and I said, you know what, I'm, I'm out of here. I don't want to do this anymore. And I got divorced from my wife and then I had a number of relationships and, and they didn't work out. And I finally said, you know, I don't understand this relationship stuff, but I'm smart enough to get a couple degrees. I can figure it out. So I start studying everything I could about love, sex and relationship because the common denominator in all those relationships was me. And um, so I did a whole lot of transformational work and, uh, and, and studied with teachers from all over the world. I worked with a Native American shaman off and on for 15 years, and, and I really learned a lot. And then in uh, 92, I got involved in the men's movement, and I listened to the so-called men's gurus were teaching, and I went, that's not right. That's not the way to have a, a, a good, loving relationship. So then I kind of start teaching men what I had been learning about relationships. And that led me to um, explore a whole lot of different things. And I have went to a uh, tantric uh, fest, uh, celebration at Puja. And I met my wife, Judith, at that puja. I walked in the door, and there she was. She looked at me and smiled. I looked at her and smiled. And we connected and we went out the following weekend and that was um, 18 years ago. So, um, you, you know, it was just amazing. And now the magic that we have is so priceless. I just, um, I said, you know, we got to teach people about this. And she agreed. And we wrote um, a, a pre an earlier book called, uh, So That's Why They Do That, Men, Women and Their Hormones. And we talk about how hormones drive the behavior in men and women. And for people who want to be in a good functioning relationship, you got to kind of have a little understanding of that so that when things go awry and conflict arises, it may not be you. It may be the hormone that's driving that. And we'll talk more about that when we talk about communication. But anyhow, that's what got me to the point here. And for me, I always thought that sex was a spiritual experience. <laughs> I would say, you know, if you've ever said, oh, God, I'm coming, you know, is a spiritual experience. So I said, you know, I got to figure out how to do that on a regular basis. You know, it's great when you have a, a, a magical connection and a one night stand, but how do you keep that thing going? Uh, I think, you know, your, your, um, you know, spark the relationship program is a great, great way to get people in the space to be able to do that. So that's kind of my story. Well, thank you so much, Frank, and definitely want to dive into a few of the things you mentioned. But let's talk about sex as a spiritual experience. That sounds interesting. I can definitely relate. I'm curious, but I haven't necessarily taken a intentional study I'm definitely intentional in the way I approach it and, it and it can feel spiritual, but why don't you talk to us maybe a little bit more in detail about what that means to you, sex spiritually, and then how we can cultivate that. Sure. The, uh, that's, you know, the title of our book is The Magical Sex Book. And what's magical sex? Well, that's, that's the kind of sex you have when you, you look at each other and you go, Oh my God, why don't we do that more often? And, um, you know, it's just, you're, you're so connected and, and it doesn't come automatically. You know, we, we're trained not to have great relationships and not to have great sex because if we were doing that, we wouldn't be working so hard for the man. And so I think that, you know, once we learn to do this, so I'm getting off the point here, but when you know you have that experience in, in your brain, it actually occurs in the right prefrontal cortex. And that's the, that, that, that lights up during orgasm. And that's the same thing that lights up when people are having a religious experience. So 
once you get into that state where you're so connected to your partner and you know how to exchange the energy with her because you know that sex is energy, when you exchange and combine your sexual energies, it puts you into a state of bliss. And, you know, well, everybody knows that, that meditation is a spiritual practice. It's like prayer. Prayer is a spiritual practice. If you use your relationship, as a spiritual practice, if you use it like a meditation saying, okay, we're going to make love now, but you do it, you go into it with the intention of doing this combination of your two bodies and your two energies to create, you know, it's, it's a triangle. There's you, there's her and the relationship, the connection, and that's the true Holy Spirit. So if you keep that nurturing, do that while you're making love, you're actually into an altered state. You're into a state of ecstasy and bliss. And that's so nurturing and so creative, not only spiritually, but healthy, health-wise as well. Because people who do this regularly are healthier, they live longer, and they have more fulfilling lives. They're more creative. All kinds of wonderful things happen. So is, is that making sense? It makes sense. I like the way it sounds. How can we start to cultivate that? You know, I love the episode, a couple couple episodes back you had with Dr. Tara, and she talked about, you know, communication about sex. And that's the big part of it. You know, if you want to have that kind of experience, if you want to have a magical sex experience, you have to have a magical relationship experience. And the key to relationship and key to magical sex is the connection. There's a, a wonderful book called uh, General Theory of Love where they, they talk about limbic resonance. When you're so connected to your partner, you know, you finish their sentence, you know what they're going to say before they open their mouth, uh, you know, and you feel their vibration. You look at their face and say, oh, you're not feeling so well today. What's going on? You know, you can just tell. Or they're radiating happiness and you say, oh, God, he looks so great today. And that comes over to you. So there's a lot of that interplay between what they call limbic resonance, which is the below the conscious level parts of our brain. So we get that connection. And what guys don't understand and what um, I think when I was listening to you and Dr. Tara, you know, talking to men about sex is a real challenge. And um, I, in my book, I talk about a study they did where they interviewed long-term married couples, and uh, they interviewed the men separately from the women, and they asked the men if they thought they were good lovers, and 85% of them thought they were good lovers. When they interviewed their wives, only 15% of the women agreed with their husbands. So that tells us two things. One, that uh, guys don't know what they don't know. And two, the women aren't telling them the truth. So the th communicating about sex is really tough with guys because I know I was one of those 85% guys that <laughs> that had a 15% record. So because I was, uh, as I said, I was a fighter pilot and I was arrogant. I thought I knew everything. And, and what I didn't know was how to deal with women. And the every woman is different. And what I learned with one woman is not the same as what works for the next woman. So women, for us to have magical sex and for sex to be a spiritual practice, you have to have a great connection. And having that connection is, is developed through the woman because the woman communicates differently than men. Their brains are different than our brains and their way of communicating is different. And they, they bond through oxytocin and they generate oxytocin by talking. If you ever wonder why women just gab, 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 gab so much, that's because they're both generating not only oxytocin, but norepinephrine and dopamine. It's a, a real chemical cocktail. So, what guys don't know is they, they said, you know, she just goes on and on and on. Well, yeah, she does because she's trying to reach out to you. And if you're just kind of tuning her out, then you're blocking her energy. And if you just listen to what she has to say, not because you've got to fix her, that's the wrong thing to do. You don't want to play Mr. Fixes. You just want to hear what she has to say. And she may not even want to have a problem solved. 
But if she's talking to you, and, and we use a number of rituals that help us to communicate in, in a way that builds the oxytocin connection. And that's what gets us to that spiritual place, that connection. So we feel that love flowing back and forth with each other. So um, some of the rituals that we do, we do <laughs> our morning worship. I know it sounds weird, but we just take maybe 30 seconds in the morning, you know, while we're, we're just finishing breakfast, getting ready to get it to work. And I'll say, you know what, honey, I really love you. And I love the way you look. I love your heart. I love the artwork that you do. You know, you're just a gorgeous girl and I love you. And I you support me and I love how you're working on your art. And um, I, thanks for being here. I love you. And then she'll tell me how she loves me and what she likes about how I bring masculinity to the relationship and how I'm there and I take care of things around the house and so on. And that's it. And then, you know, and it gets repetitive. We do it every, every day, but it doesn't matter. It's just the idea. We're taking that time to acknowledge that we have that love for each other. So that's one ritual that we do every day. And, you know, to, to build these relationships, it's a daily practice. I mean, it's like raising kids. You got to take care of them every day. And, and then the relationship requires that kind of care as well. Before we continue on, we're going to take a short break to tell you about our sponsors. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Life can be overwhelming, and many people are burned out without even knowing it. Symptoms can include lack of motivation, feeling helpless or trapped, detachment, fatigue, and more. We've all been there, even me. When I found myself burned out in the past, it has always come after I've been doing way too much without taking care of myself. And I can vouch that burnout is a pretty awful feeling. You become totally overcome by fatigue, brain fog, and it takes extra effort to keep yourself motivated. We mostly associate burnout with work, but that's not the case. Any of our roles in life can lead us to feeling burned out. And BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. When we're up against a world that is telling us to go, go, go all the time, burnout is unfortunately all too common. However, it doesn't have to be. Thankfully, there are amazing resources out there like BetterHelp Services. Talking with somebody can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life, as well as to provide you the tools to avoid getting burned out. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash I do. That's BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash I do. I've been pitched quite a few products claiming they're going to blow my mind, and I'm always a bit skeptical. I'm also never the one to give into hype, but this time my mind has officially been blown by Foria, and I'm excited to share it with you all. Imagine your best orgasm. Now imagine that it could be even better. With Foria, it's beyond possible. Foria makes award-winning sex and intimacy products made with all natural and plant-based ingredients and CBD designed to increase pleasure and relieve any discomfort, whether you're solo or with a partner. Foria will transform your sex life. Their products are made to help women and people with vulvas fully experience their sexual pleasure. Think intensely heightened orgasms. My favorite product is Foria's bestseller, Awaken Arousal Oil. It is the ultimate pleasure pregame. Using CBD and warming sensation inducing organic botanicals that enhance arousal, sensitivity, pleasure, and access to orgasms, the oil is like a juicy warm up that makes me feel incredibly relaxed, open, and honestly, just turned on. Foria has a serious cult following, and for good reason, with tens of thousands of people who have had their sex lives transformed through using their products. So yes, you have my permission to try this. I fully endorse you to go ahead and treat yourself to more deeper, fuller pleasure wherever you can find it as often as possible, and you can start with a bottle of Foria. Foria is offering a special deal for our listeners. Get 20% off your first order by visiting 
by visiting foriawellness.com slash I do or use the code I do at checkout. That's foria, F-O-R-I-N wellness.com forward slash I do for 20% off your first order. I recommend trying their Awaken Arousal and Sex Oil. You'll thank me later. I want to talk about uh, some of the other rituals and, and ways to create magical sex, but I want to go back to your point on communication and how women, you know, can talk and they connect through oxytocin. But, you know, to be fair, I feel like I really want to be heard as well. And, you know, as a guy, as a man, and that it it can go both ways. You know, I don't, I don't want to say something that's on my mind and have my partner try to fix it right away and always be trying to fix it. I think we've talked about it on the show in the past too, that sometimes both sexes, they just want to be heard and listened to. And we don't necessarily need to be solving our partner's problems. It's just reflecting and, and mirroring them. And then that can build connection from both sides. Absolutely. That's really a great point. And, and the, the idea I was trying to make is that, that, um, the, the Guys are so caught up in their way. You've heard the term, I'm sure, of mansplaining, where guys think they have to teach a woman something that she already knows. Um, but I, there's a lot of guys. I was um, talking to a woman the other day, and she said, you know, I keep telling him what I want, and he just doesn't listen. And, you know, guys sometimes tune out. And because she's demanding and nagging and after him so much that he he's then he gets his dander up and he won't he won't won't uh, cooperate so what i'm saying with with women to approach men about talking about sex and creating their relationship you have to kind of lead him into it and tell him things that they like and ask them what what's their vision for the relationship and how would they like to have a relationship and we have those kind of discussions you know maybe once a quarter or something like, Hey, let's, let's step back here and see where we're going now. And what's your vision for our lovemaking? What's your vision for our, our work together and so on. So the, the idea of getting him getting past his ego, because you tell a guy something, I mean, that's one of the things in the military, they train you, train you, train you, train you and train you. And you make mistake after mistake, but they keep training you until it becomes almost automatic. Well, we're not taught how to do that in relationship. And it doesn't mean training like a military boot camp, you know, but it means working with somebody over and over, because if they don't get it right the first time, don't be critical. Just say, oh, I really love that you did that. And would you mind doing it just a little harder, a little softer, up, down, lower, whatever, and, and encourage them and give them feedback. And I, so many times I would have partners who would say, oh, don't do that. Okay, well, that's the end of that. So, um, you know, you have to say, well, you know, would you, when you did that, it didn't really feel so good. Would you mind doing this a little bit more? And, and, and when you ask, like in saying, I have a request rather than demand, then you're more, much more likely to get cooperation and, uh, get, and get past guys' egos. And, and that's the big challenge in communicating in relationship and in sex is getting past the guy's ego who thinks he knows it all. Does that make sense, Chase? Absolutely. And on that note, I'd like to share, I just came across an interesting exercise uh, for communication in the bedroom. And it's kind of, a, I don't want to say role play, but it, it's a game, it's a tool. And it's its basically Simon Says. So everyone knows Simon Says uh, when you're a kid. And so you play that and you can set a time, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and one partner gets to be in control. And when I heard it explained, it made a lot of sense. And it, it really helps you to understand what it is you like and then forces you to communicate it. And so your partner basically can't do anything. And obviously we have boundaries and, and safe words and everything and consent built into this game. And then you say, what it is that you want. And as your partner's doing it, 
they they have to do like exactly what it is you're saying. So you have to get more descriptive in your communication. Like you said, faster, slower. Those are obviously the basic ones. But then it just seems like a really powerful tool to help us understand what it is that we like in the bedroom, be able to communicate it to our partner. And then also for our partner to be able to receive. And, and also it, it kind of removes a bit of the maybe the hesitancy or judgment that it's just like, hey, I'm, I'm surrendering and going along with this. So I, I wanted to mention that as a tool to maybe bring into the bedroom and it'll just kind of spice things up and make things uh, a bit different. Absolutely. That's great. I love that exercise. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to play that with Judith. There that's we go. Really fun. Yeah. yeah, that's really fun. If you're like me, you love the transition of spring. Flowers blooming, more sunny hours in the day, nice breezes, spring cleaning rituals, and many more. However, for me, there is one small caveat. It is definitely the hardest season to dress for. It can be so difficult to find the right outfits in the spring when every day is different and weather can change at the drop of a hat. Luckily, Faherty makes it easy. They make the perfect clothes for all seasons. Faherty is a family-run brand making high-quality, timeless clothing with modern design and functionality. It's the kind of effortless style you want every time you go digging into your closet. Clothes so comfortable that it feels like you've had them for years, but they fit you so well that you think they were made just yesterday and just for you. Plus, with gorgeous prints and designs, giving them unique and vintage vibes, how can you go wrong? I absolutely love all of my Faherty clothes. They're basically my whole closet, so when I heard they wanted to sponsor the show, I was thrilled. My favorite recent purchase is their My Konos jacket. Whether I'm wearing it on a weekend outing with my daughter or an evening with the girls, it's the perfect piece for the unpredictable weather this time of year. This wrap jacket is beautiful. At first glance and feel, you'll immediately notice the high quality and fine designs. It has warm, nature-inspired yarn-dyed stripes in colors of the land, sea, and sky with roomy shoulders, wide sleeves, and a removable belt. It's very comfortable and a must-have layering piece. And Faherty is so confident in the quality of their stuff. They have a lifetime guarantee of quality. They'll replace or fix your clothes forever, no matter what. And right now, Faherty is giving all of our listeners 20% off. 20% off. Head to com slash I do and use the code I do at checkout to snag 20% off all of your new spring staples. That's code I do at Faherty, F-A-H-E-R-T-Y com slash I do for 20% off. com slash I do. Quitting smoking is hard and you don't have to be a smoker to know that. I've personally never been a regular smoker, but several people close to me have been and I've witnessed their experiences trying to quit. It's super frustrating, exhausting, and not fun. When someone you're close to is struggling, whether it's a romantic partner, a family member, or a good friend, you naturally become invested in what's best for them. That's why you've got to check out Fume. Fume is a natural inhaler designed for a better, safer, and natural way to quit smoking cigarettes. It's a no smoke, no vape, no nicotine replacement for the hand to mouth habit of smoking. Fume combines the benefit of natural plants and behavioral science to distract smokers from their craving in a natural way. One of the reasons I think Fume is effective is because it's emphasis on replacing the habit. Fume handcrafts wooden inhalers and uses natural flavors to curb cravings. They have flavors like peppermint to conquer with the minty notes to stimulate menthol cigarettes and other flavors like cozy chai for a sweeter experience. And all of their flavors are 100% natural, no harmful chemicals, no artificial flavors, and absolutely no nicotine. Quitting is tough, but Fume can really help. If you have doubts, they've got thousands of five-star reviews from smokers who have tried everything else and this worked. Whether you're a smoker or an ex-smoker who struggles with cravings, Fume is perfect for you. Head to breathefume.com slash I do and use the promo code I do to save 10% off your entire order. That's breathe. 
Fum, B-R-E-A-T-H-E-F-U-M dot com slash I do to save 10% off your entire order. One of the things we talk about in the Magical Sex Book are four to create and sustain amazing sex. And step one is, I, we call it pre-play. Step two is foreplay. Everybody knows what that is. Step three is the play, whether it's oral sex or intercourse. And step four is after play, which is another part of the uh, program that people neglect. But pre-play, um, Emily Nagoski in her book, uh, Come As You Are, is a really wonderful book. And she says, you know, the key for women to have really good sex is, is establishing the right context who you are, where you are, and how you're feeling about that. And so we kind of, before, even before we read Emily's book, developed a thing we call pre-play. And what we do in pre-play is we get together in the bedroom naked and we sit on the bed and we talk sometimes just about what did you read in the paper? What do you want to do this afternoon or this evening? Or what do you, you know, what's your plans for next week? What movie do you want to see? What show do you want to watch? Uh, just, it doesn't matter, whatever, but that's when the communication and oxytocin bonding starts happening for the woman. And then we do some uh, stretching and touching exercises, and we have a lot of examples of that in our book. That's important is because women's brains don't stop. when Even when they're asleep, their brains are running. So the idea is to be able to slow her thought process down and bring it to the present. And nothing will do that faster than touch. So we do these touching exercises. And then once we feel that we're really connected, then we move into the foreplay. So then, you know, there and there's a, I have a whole list of things that you can do in foreplay that you can use with your woman. And I really recommend that, you know, if you're having trouble getting started talking about this, is to get this book and read it together. And it really, it will really catapult your relationship to another level. Then, um, I want, you know, I don't, I don't want to get into foreplay and, and deep play, but I want to talk a little bit about after play. And then, after you've both had your orgasm and you're snuggling and cuddling, and that's a really important thing for the woman because she's now really flooded with oxytocin. And men get oxytocin as well, but then they get testosterone and that blocks the oxytocin. So we're always like, oh, well, okay, what's on TV? What's for dinner? Um, I, I'm going to get up and get a drink or do whatever. And they, and and the, the, the spell is broken and they're gone. But if you can stay there for 10 or 20 minutes, even better, and hold each other and, and bask in that sexual energy that you just created. And then if you want, you can use what's called sexual magic. Now, everybody knows that thoughts have energy and what you think about, you tend to create. Well, we know sex has energy because we can feel it. So if you combine your thoughts of what you want to manifest along with the sexual energy and you put that out into the universe, either thinking about that right after orgasm or verbally talking about it, and then there's a whole there's a whole process for setting up a ceremony if you even want to do that. But that's an, a whole other way to use all that sexual energy and magic that you've just created. I would like to ask you about um that ceremony I, I we don't have to go into super details but um what what would that ceremony look like setting it up well the first thing you do is you talk about it you know you talk with each other and say well what do we what do we really want to manifest maybe you need money for a new car maybe you're trying to have a baby maybe you want to um you know, you want to get a house or a new job or whatever, whatever it is you want to manifest. You think about that and write it down. And if you want to get really elaborate about it, a piece of red paper, cut it in a triangle and write it on that uh, piece of paper. So then you both agree that when you have your orgasm, and it doesn't require that you have mutual orgasm, but just when whoever's thinking Whoever's having the orgasm, and of course, I always say, well, ladies come first. So uh, when she's having her orgasm, as she's finishing 
you know, and sort of winding down and, you know, you've given her as many orgasms as you can, then you might mention magic, magic, and think about what it is you want to manifest. And then if you're continuing and you're going for your orgasm and you get to the point where you've ejaculated or however orgasm you have, because many people orgasm without ejaculating and, and think magic, magic and whatever it is, maybe it's $10 million, maybe it's uh, a new car, whatever it is, but you think or speak those, that thing that want to manifest out loud and then you just let it go just turn it over to the universe because you've put that energy out there and magic can happen and it's happened a lot for me i've I've manifested a lot a lot of things that way you mentioned that you trained with a native american shaman i'm curious i'm sure you learned lots of different things but what are some of the more powerful things you learned as they apply to relationships well, the sex magic was one of the things I learned from him. And um, the other thing is that, that don't be afraid to ask what you want. And if, you, if your partner doesn't want to give you what you want, then negotiate and say, well, what version of that would you like to do? And there may be some things that the partner said, you know, I'm never going to do that. So then you have to look at it and say, well, can I live the rest of my life, the rest of my relationship without that? And Maybe you think, well, the value that I have, my connection with this partner is so valuable that that's just like icing on the cake. And I'm not going to throw the cake out because it doesn't have icing on it. So that was one of the biggies I got from him is was not to hold back and to be able to explore everything that you wanted to explore sexually. And, um, and he offered that. He, I, I did many, many uh, workshops and ceremonies with him. And he would really he'd put people on the hot seat and say, you know, what's holding you back and why? What do you really want? And so I constantly ask myself, what do I want for my relationship? And then I come and, and then I ask Judith, well, what do you really want? And then we see how we can make that work together. One of the last things I want to ask you before I let you go, Frank, is how your time flying has informed your work in relationships and if there's any correlates that you were really able to bring over. Yes, thank you. There is a lot. First of all, uh, there's a lot of training that goes into being able to fly those high-performance airplanes. I mean, weeks of ground school, learning every component of that airplane and how it interfaces and then weeks of um, simulator practice and then actual flying with an instructor until he feels you're good enough and safe enough to do it by yourself and then you can go solo and then you move from training aircraft into high performance aircraft And, and so I thought you know we don't have any training like that for relationships or sex either one Nowhere. I mean, you have to, I had to really go, I mean, it took me years to find this shaman, uh, the the medicine man that I worked with. And then I began to find other teachers and this was way before the internet. So it was a lot more difficult to find that. So, you know, you have to make yourself available for training and do the research and read the books and work together as a team. And that's the same thing that happened in the Air Force. You know, you work together as a team. When you fly airplanes, you don't ever, usually in a fighter, you don't go up by yourself. You go up with a wingman. And the two of you work together to to accomplish the mission. And uh, when you're learning, you work with an instructor. So, you know, it's hard to do this. Relationships take a lot of time and work, but they're so valuable and so fulfilling once you get to the point where you get past the uh, the conflict stage and into the repair stage and then into the growth phase, then, then um, life gets much better and a lot more fun. Beautiful, Frank. Well, I think it's really commendable. Thank you for your service, obviously, and for diving into this back in the, in the seventies as a man, it's still not, widely accepted to be in touch with 
with our feelings and, and also be really diving into relationships. It is certainly more and more, but I imagine a fighter pilot in the seventies, it, it wasn't really widely accepted. So I think it's great that you're still there, still doing the work and, and sharing it with everyone. And I appreciate you sharing it with me and, and our audience. Oh, thank you so much, Chase and Sarah, both for uh, having me on. I love talking about this and, and I love supporting your work as well. Thank you guys so much for tuning into today's episode. As always, all the links to the guest as well as any of their recommendations will be in the show notes page. You can find the link to that in the episode description or by going to idopodcast.com. Click on the podcast tab up at the top and you will have access to all the episodes that we've ever done. There are over 300 of them. Uh, And while you're on our website, if you haven't checked out our free 14 day happy couple challenge, We really hope you do. It's a free email challenge that we send to you. It's 14 days of fun, easy, doable challenges to help strengthen and improve your relationship. And if you're looking for something that provides a little more help with working on your relationship, whether it's improving intimacy or communication with your partner or just bringing the spark back, we would love for you guys to check out our online course, Spark my relationship. We're offering a hundred dollars off to all of our listeners. If you go to sparkmyrelationship.com forward slash unlock, we've worked with over 15 psychologists and therapists to create the real life tools and strategies that they are teaching their clients. So we wanted to give them to you. It's a self-paced online course that can be done in as little as a month or up to three months. You can really decide how much or how little you want to do with your partner or maybe just yourself. So we hope you guys check that out. It's sparkmyrelationship.com forward slash unlock. Have a great day.